We're going to show you how to skin a skunk without any of the stink. So skinning skunks can be a little daunting because we think of them as being stinky animals and that smell is tough to get out. But the reality is you can skin this animal just like about any animal just by avoiding the stink glands. So we'll show you where those are and how to avoid them. We love skunk fur. It's one of our favorite furs to work with. It's super unique. Uh, it has amazing patterns. Every skunk has a different pattern. So when we get this animal, <clears throat> I should start by saying that this skunk's been dead for a day, so it's a little stiff. So if you see me kind of working on it, that's why. But first thing we do, like with any animals, we give it good combing. We're going to want to try and get all the stuff out of the fur that it may have. Skunks can be kind of nasty. Being a, uh, a burrowing animal <clears throat> here on the tail, you can see it's got some stuff. We're just going to work that out. <clears throat> so... Like with most animals, you're going to start by making your cut, you know, around the legs, around the front legs, and you're going to go straight across this fur line. It's pretty obvious on a skunk where that fur line is. So we'll start with that. So we use a couple different knives. I use a duller knife that I don't care too much about to go around the front legs and the back legs, make that initial cut. I'm doing this because we're going to be up against the bone. And so I just don't want to get my nice skinning knife too dull. Do that here, gonna go here. I'm a little bit more careful on the back legs as I wanna keep that Achilles tendon intact for hanging. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's just something that I like to do because they hang a little bit better. And that Achilles tendon's on the back of the heel. So just using your tip on the back side. Now we're gonna make our cut with a sharper knife, going straight across, we're essentially going right to the butt and then across. The big glands that you want to avoid actually sit above the tail on the back. They're really right here on both sides. And if you feel with your hands, you can feel them. So coming across here, we don't have to worry too much about it, but once we start opening this up, just go really shallow in, the, in this area. Again, we're just following that fur line, staying just under the fur. In general, this cut, you would rather have too much belly fur on the back side than too much back fur on the belly side. That's because this long hair is the stuff you're going to be using for garments. Now I'm going to come around and go around the actual butthole and, and make that connecting cut. But this is where I really want to be careful about just staying shallow to the skin that is. Now, personally, I hang my animals when I'm skinning them. I mean, most of the time when you're case skinning, that's what you're gonna do. But just to give myself a little bit of room, I'm gonna come in and open it up around this heel on both sides. And we're gonna hang it up with a gambrel. We're just using a regular gambrel here with these, uh, I've, I've always called them a dog leash gambrel because it looks like a dog leash, but then we're gonna hang it on our wench. We use an electric wench for all these animals, which makes it really convenient. We're going up and down. <clears throat> so now we're coming back to where we started here, right below the butthole, and we're going to take our tail out. So again, back here, underneath here is where those two glands are. These are the things you want to avoid. 
I'm coming with my knife just along the base of the tail, underneath the tail, I should say. Just cutting in a straight line. You're gonna wanna go oh, half to three quarters down the tail. You're trying really hard to stay right on top of that bone. That's where a sharp knife and short cuts. Cause if you come off the side of your tail here, it uh, has the potential to fall apart. So now that we have that, we'll get back to this section once we get some of this fur back and we'll pull the rest of that tailbone out. So again, this, this right here is the really important part where you just wanna stay close to that skin, peel away and skin in just a slow motion. So this is a male, we can tell because obviously it has a penis, but also you're going to start to see those gonads popping out and you're just going to skin right over the top of them. And essentially, if you can avoid those, you can avoid the stink sack. Come to this other side. And again, right between kind of this back corner, the tail and the anus is gonna be that important period where just hug the skin. You know, if you can keep your blade close to the skin, I'll leave a little bit of fat on the skin. But keep your blade close to the skin right here. You're going to end up avoiding those. I'll raise this up so you can see it a little better. Now this is going to naturally bring you down the tail a little bit. So you're pulling away to, um, to stretch um, that. I'm pulling the hide back with my hand and using the blade of my knife to separate where it's attached. And this right here is, I mean, if you can get to this point where you start seeing through, start seeing light through, you're almost in the clear. So again, those two the no-no land is right here and right here. There's, I mean, you can feel them with your hands. And if you just stay away from there, I mean, we are already in the clear. If you nick those, you're going to be having a, a rough time. But otherwise, you know, this point on, this is just like skinning another animal. So now I'm going to move to the tail. And again, I'm using just a sharp knife and going real easy and kind of separating it. Tails can be tough. We'll do a whole video on tails another time. Uh, it's just slow, slow and steady. You see, I'm kind of holding my knife like a pencil and uh, just really easy going between the bone and the hide. And with these tails, you only need to get three quarters of the way down. Then you can use a tail stripper to pop it out. I'll show you that. So now once you're two this point, we're going to switch over to a tail stripper. And this whole concept is you've broken enough of the hide away. So I always kind of use the smallest pieces of tail stripper. You put the tail in here and you're going to pull the, the bone out of the hide. 
and you'll feel it. I can feel it wants to go, but again, just slow and steady because this is where you rip the, you know, you can accidentally rip the end of your tail off. Just like that, that pops out. So now, I mean, again, we are, we're in the clear, we're past these. So now it just comes down to skinning this like any other animal. Skunks have a lot of fat, um, which makes them easy in some sense because it gives you a buffer with your blade, but it also can make it tough because you can lose track of where you are. Just like any animal, be careful around that belly. So you're essentially pulling down, waiting to feel that tension, and then lightly cutting the tension. Exactly, you'll see that tissue that starts to separate when I pull, and I'm just cutting that. I mean, the, the pulling motion is doing the majority of the job for us here. I really like having this electric hoist because it allows me to skin at eye level the whole time. It makes it really easy. Now we're coming into the arms. The arms can be another in a tricky place as you have to you know, we're coming down the spine here this is the spine and i can feel that arm that shoulder starting to come through so i'm going to come in along the chest a little bit again this animal is a day one day cold so that chest area can be a very sensitive area it's really easy to cut so just be careful you're gonna start right there, you're gonna to start to see. And again, I'm just pulling because it's a skunk. You can get away with that. Their hide's not on there very tight. I can start to see that shoulder come through. And now I'm just, again, gonna let the, the hide tell me where to go. You see that arm starting to show. And coming in, and the whole idea, you know, when, when skinning an animal for its pelt, that you'd rather leave a little too much on the pelt and deal with it on the fleshing board than get too close to the hide and risk cutting it. So this is another good example. You can see that shoulder starting to come out. So I can just lightly with my knife and with a little bit of pressure, you can see it start to, to show there. Coming back inside. Now I'm just working that front leg out. And again, you pull down on the hide, let the hide tell you kind of where it wants to go. Once you see this hole, you're in a good place. It means you've separated the leg. Now just pop right out. Again, we're gonna come over here, do that same thing. You know, when you're working inside that neck, you can, it's pretty easy to hit the jugular, which is what I've done. So we will get just wipe that up as we go. All right. Keeping a rag on hand doesn't hurt. Just keep things as clean as possible. So we're past that, those legs. Now we're onto the face. So the first thing we're going to be looking for as we come down, and you got your arm up inside the hide, and I'm using my fingers. So my fingers are in here pulling back, and that's helping to separate the hide and show you where to cut. So I've got my finger up in the hide. I'm pulling back, coming around. Skunks have a weasel-like face where their eyes and ears are far up. So you're gonna get quite a bit of, quite a bit of skull out before you get to the ears. They are not a weasel though. They were once classified as a weasel, but they've been moved of their own class, which is kind of a cool story. So we're coming around and I can feel that's an ear right there. Oh. Again, so the ear of a skunk kind of sits on the side of the head. And it's another thing when you have that animal hole you can look at and you know kind of gauge before you start skinning where are the ears, where are the eyes. So I'm just gonna cut 
right through that. Directly in. Directly in. Come over here, kind of gauge it, see the cheeks popping out there. So directly in, that's the ear. That's what you want. The, the market for skunks is not as great as it once was. And so it's now mostly for novelty items. And so you want to make sure when you're skinning a skunk that you, you put some effort into making sure their face comes out good. So we're going to take our time. We're getting down now past the cheeks. And often I switch my knife out here for an old, just, this is just a paring knife and I sharpen it every time. You want a nice sharp knife, but you're going to be jamming this knife. Can we get a close up of the knife? It's just a, just a paring nice. knife. But you're going to be jamming this knife into the bone. So it's going to dull up your knife. So I just use a cheap thin bladed knife that I can get really sharp. And now I'm coming and just going nice and easy around start to see some features pop out like there's the cheek so you're opening up to where the mouth is so that eye is going to sit right below that and just go slowly there's the eye starting to pop out so i'm going to want to hug that eye and where the there's a kind of a little pocket in here that you got to cut and once you cut it, it it'll allow that whole eye to come out directly in like you did the ear directly in now here's, here's the other eye, you can see it starting to come out. So I'm going between the eyeball and the eyelid, going directly in just a little bit. That's gonna come out. Now you're just following the nose and the cheek. We're gonna come over here to the front. This is the lower lip. A lot of times their, their teeth are closed. So you're just, you, know, you kinda gotta work that out. Pull, pull, pull. See, I'm putting my finger in there, pops right off. There's that lower lip. Now we're going to come around to the front again. We're getting to where the whiskers are. Again, hugging the skull, hug the skull. And now all that's left is the nose. And so once I know that I'm at that last point, I'm going to cut straight through. And so that, now you have a skunk with a nice face if you want to sell them to the novelty market, but that is how you skin skunk without any of the stink associated with it. Again, just two glands, really easy to avoid. No smell here, wouldn't want you smelling the fur shed. And uh, nice combing. Look at how beautiful that, that pelt is.